Turkey, the author of the biography Living Without Fear and the co-publisher of the Amazon best-selling Inspired Journeys. Get in touch with me if you want to start living without fear or writing your book. And please share this podcast with a friend who you know needs to hear this episode. Subscribe to my newsletter and YouTube channel, write a short review and rate it on your favorite podcast platform with a lot of stars if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your support. This truly means a lot to me. And today I'm so excited to have Martina Maya with me. She is originally from Slovakia and lives now in Switzerland. A few years ago, Martina underwent a life-changing experience. The consequences of her emotionally avoidant mother and a toxic marriage led to many years of suffering and confusion. Through hypnotherapy, she has gained a profound understanding of the importance of healing her deep pain. In the process, she discovered immense motivation to guide people through their healing journeys. And that's why she decided to become a certified cognitive behavioral hypnotherapist. Martina is deeply passionate to initiate positive changes and helping her clients in recognizing their hidden capabilities and unique knowledge through the power of hypnosis. Welcome to the show, dear Martina. (laughs) Thank you very much, Esther. Thank you for having me uh, on your podcast and uh, thank you for a lovely introduction. You're welcome, Martina. And let's get into it in your story. What has been your turning moment in life? Okay, so uh, as you already mentioned, my main turning point when was when I came to Switzerland um, after long years of uh, toxic marriage I kind of separated from my ex-husband and I came to Switzerland and this gave me some kind of breathing space or uh, some kind of um, uh, detachment from him and uh, I realized what um, I've been through and what I roughly need to change. And this is why I decided to have hypnotherapy to kind of reconfirm my already established beliefs uh, and needs. I just needed to um, have a little bit of guidance and um, focus on what I want and what I need and I found hypnotherapy and cognitive behavioral hypnotherapy was very effective for me. Um, I have managed to see things clearer and um, gain some kind of self-confidence because my confidence was very low at that time. I was quite confused what I want and what I need. My needs were never met or, uh, or I haven't um, had the skill to know how to meet my own needs. And this is what I needed to, to, to have a guidance from. Um, uh, so uh, this, is, this was my main turning point that I went through divorce. And uh, this was, of course, uh, as every divorce probably is not a very pleasant experience. And that gave me a little bit of strength to go through. And then I took step by step and I realized that um, this is what I want to do professionally. I saw the effect on me so, and I saw the effect on other people and the testimonials from the other people. Uh, so uh, that's why I decided to study it. I took a course. Uh, I, do, I took some other courses as, um, on top of that. Uh, I have a healthcare nursing uh, certificate, so this was a nice addition to that. Um, And then I opened up my own company called Hypnobond. Uh, I specialize particularly on relationships, uh, relationship with yourself 
and with others. And, and this is my main, main target now um, to guide people through their own healing, to show them their own hidden knowledge and capabilities mm. through hypnosis. Beautiful, Martina. Um, what do you think was the most important thing in the relationship with yourself? How was your former self and how is yourself today? What changed in your approach? Um, okay, there are several uh, differences. Uh, I think uh, the main differences that I can pick up uh, is I was a little bit of a people pleasing uh, personality. I uh, grew up with um, quite emotional uh, avoidant mother. So I always thought in order to have love, I need to do something. Uh, so the love was not unconditional. It was based on conditions rather. So this is why I developed this people pleasing attitude that I need to always do something in order to be uh, liked and loved. Um, and the second most important thing was also uh, the um, I wasn't sure what I need and what I want. So the emotional uh, intelligence wasn't wasn't developed very much uh, because I never looked into my own needs. Uh, and this, of course, changed through uh, real insight into um, into my childhood and into um, quite difficult thoughts and maybe memories that I had to go through in order to see the truth for me. So uh, this changed, of course. Now I'm much more um, assertive. I know what I want, I know what I need. I'm more connected with my um, instinct or if, if you want to call it or, and I choose the right people around me. I, choose, I can um, organize my time in such a way that I don't spend too much energy on things that are not important. Uh, and this has, incredible effect on my life. I have amazing friends. I have incredible partner next to me. So, um, and I actually have more than I need. So I'm internally grateful. Absolutely. Mm. Wonderful. One thing stuck to me, emotionally avoidant mother. What, what was your mother like? Maybe some listeners are asking themselves what, yes, what does it course. mean and maybe my mother was maybe similar so yes um my mom was um she was there physically but she was not there emotionally so what, what i mean by this it's i i never had a hug or i never had a kiss from her or uh, just um, normal um, words of affection. Uh, she was very disconnected from herself uh, and hence she did not find the way to connect with me. And um, it was always guessing game. I had to guess all the time her needs and her wishes and I was very afraid of disappointing her and doing something wrong. Uh, so there was never a talk. There was never, um, you know, uh, just a normal discussion about emotions, for example. When I was upset, there was a rather mocking or um, disconnection. Uh, then, you know, hug and, and maybe to ask what, what is the problem and things like this. Uh, so I was very much uh, um, brought up by my grandfather, uh, grandmother rather than my mom. Um, then she stopped talking to me for two years. Uh, that was a few years ago. And that, of course, uh, <laughs> completely uh, dysregulated me. Um, and so that was another, another turning point where I had, to, I had to go through therapy um, myself because I could not understand why 
a, a parent who should love you and take care mm. of you would just stop talking mm. um, and so that was very difficult but now I have uh, figured out in a way how to um, still have relationship with her but to keep my boundaries and to keep my time and my efforts limited so mm -hmm. I st we, she's great in jokes and laughing and uh, s silly stories. So I make <laughs> I make the best of these situations, and I just accept that she's just not naturally motherly, uh, nurturing person, and I take her more like like a, maybe a good friend or someone like that. Um, that's my way of kind of accepting that this this who she is and mm. it makes my life better of course mm. I just wonder so you said you've been um with your grandmother yes grandmother the most of your time how how come that your mother got this way and your grandmother was was more caring um I I'm really not sure. Maybe because my grandma was more there uh, most of the time when I came back from school, or in the morning she used to make breakfast for me and parted my hair, and then made dinner. So she was m more there. Uh, plus, she always gave me the biggest hugs, the mm. biggest hugs. Uh, she was a quite small, petite woman, but she had such strength in her, um, and. Also, when I was in a boarding school for six years and whenever I came home, she was always the one who just sat me down and uh, just tell me how was your week. And she really listened, you know, it was that active listening. We are talking about it now that she was so focused on me and just let me talk. And I think that was that was uh, very soothing for me at that time. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wonderful. And then you did hypnotherapy. Some people think maybe it's some kind of woo-woo stuff. <laughs> Can you say something to that? Yes, of course. I mean, I completely understand. I mean, we are uh, overwhelmed with, uh, with different information these days. And especially when you look at the Hollywood films and... Uh, um, stage hypnosis, for example, <laughs> this is um, misleading um, and also it's very different from uh, clinical hypnotherapy that I do and many other professionals do. Uh, the uh, stage hypnosis is very much for entertainment and a little bit of uh, probably magic uh, tricks in there. Whereas clinical hypnosis is based, uh, is, is scientifically based uh, form of therapy. And it's probably uh, one of the fastest therapies there, are, there is. Um, it needs only six sessions usually, uh, rather than if you compare it to psychotherapies, for example, you can go for years through psychotherapy. So, um, and then hypnotherapy works very much on your subconscious mind. So build this kind of imaginary bridge between conscious and subconscious mind and the conscious mind is the the thing we want to focus because that's where all the changes are happening can you maybe explain how it works a little bit a session with you i'm just yes, curious sure. yes of course um, so what I do first, um, I, when a client is interested in hypnotherapy, we have a session, it's a, it's a free of charge session of 30 minutes, where we just get to know each other a little bit, uh, see what we can work on, a uh, client uh, can uh, tell me more details about uh, him or herself, or the background, what the goals are, etc., and then I explain my way of uh, working, what we can do um, during hypnosis, also um, self-hypnosis, because this is the one of the main, main most important thing that I give the client the tools in a way, and the client then 
use these tools, uh, hopefully for the rest of his life, <laughs> as a self-hypnosis. Uh, so, of course, every client is different. Uh, their needs need to be met on a different level, with different speed, in different angles. So I try to be creative and, and work as much as possible with the client's individuality. Mm -hmm. You responded already to my next question. I was thinking of how can you do, or if you can do hypnotherapy on yourself. So can you maybe give some some tools or to yes. our listeners? Yes, of course. I mean, there are several ways that you can implement self-hypnosis. Uh, for example, I mean, just an example, it's called a positive place. So uh, when a client comes to my, uh, my office, we do a hypnosis in my office and I put, or the client put himself into a hypnosis. And during this stage, he or she imagines a beautiful place, maybe where he went on holiday recently. So something positive and happy. And this makes the client to go into subconscious mind and feel the feelings, see the things, smell certain smells, etc. So this has a profound effect on the client during hypnosis. So when he leaves my office and goes home, each time, for, for example, when he is a little bit nervous or coming into distress, he closes his eyes and he goes into the same feelings and imagination as he was on, on, the, on the office chair. So he kind of replicate the same um, ex experience uh, that, he ex uh, that he went through during hypnosis. Uh, and this is very important. You combine the images with the feelings, with, with smells, with colors. So make it even stronger in your subconscious mind. So this is very effective when you go through something negative or when you go through something um, stressful, let's say. Beautiful. Do you have uh, another example how you can help yourself maybe without doing some therapy yeah i mean they, of course yes there are many different i'm sure you heard yourself a lot about correct breathing techniques so i cannot you know say i, I it, this is very important thing to breathe correctly uh, to stop to be able to look things and see things around us without labeling them without the thought processes. This is these are just a simple things that everyone can do. Uh, for example, what I do when I go to work or when I work, go to the city, I look outside the, of the train and see the trees, see, see the houses passing. And this is in a way um, very therapeutic for me because I can then switch off and just see things. So the same is with uh, people watching. You just watch the people passing by. Simple things like this, instead of looking at the phone, uh, maybe have a five, 10 minutes, make sure that you actually look around and see and observe. And it makes a really profound effect on your psyche. Mm, wonderful. And if you are now a very um, sensitive person, maybe you, you take a lot of sensations from other people if you go to town or if you go to a conference what can you do there uh so you mean if you are sensitive person to something negative happening to you from other people or or just if you're an empath and you take in a lot of emotions which yes. are around you, sensations from other people, their negative, uh, their their yes. um, uh, negative um, output energy or, or yeah. just energy. If you take okay. in your yes. the energy yes. of others, if you are an energy vampire, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, 
in that case, all I can say is as much as you feel in your own, own cup, then you, you don't have a problem with this. So make sure always you have time for yourself. Uh, you may, you love yourself. And this word, I think, is very broad. A lot of people have a different conception of love. But what I mean by loving yourself is you talk to yourself in compassion, as you talk to your best friend, as you talk to someone you really love. Um, you manage your time. So not a yes person and people pleasing person, but really allocate your time and your energy to right people and right activities that, that um, uh, go parallel with your values and with your needs. Uh, and definitely stay away from people who, who are uh, forever victim and forever negative because sometimes more you want to help these people, uh, more entangled you get into their problems. So there's nothing wrong to set the boundaries. There is nothing wrong to set limits in a, in a respectful and empathetic manner. Absolutely. And I think you'll be even more respected when you do that. And you should respect yourself. And that's the most important thing. Mm, absolutely. Can I ask you, what is your mantra for loving yourself? Which sentences do you use or how do you do it? Um, I, yes, I, I often talk to myself in a, in a, uh, encouraging way so uh, when I for example feeling uh, a little bit overwhelmed or a lot of things on my shoulders and um, as you said sometimes we get affected by negativity of other people uh, I just close my eyes and I actually uh, hug hug myself to to uh, produce a bit of oxytocin and uh, and just Yes, tell myself, you know, you, you got this, you were doing amazing. I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you and keep going. Whatever mm -hmm. you're doing, keep going and feel your passions. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the best I can do uh, mm -hmm. for myself at that time. And it really, really helps. When, you, when I open my eyes, I feel much more energized and much more um, confident within myself. Love it. Some, do you want to add something to what you said? But it's it was beautiful already. Thank you. It's, um, uh, I would say um, your precious, your most precious gift is time. So in few months time, you may, in few months time, you may regret whatever you're not doing. So choose what you want to do what's best for you and really go for it today that's that's what i can say beautiful so thank you so much martina for having been here <laughs> pleasure esther pleasure and thank you very much for inviting me to your wonderful podcast and thank you, dear listener, for spending your precious time with us today. And in case you feel worthless today and nobody seems to like you, we tell you, you're amazing. We love you. And you are a gift to everyone who crosses your path. And please tell yourself these sentences over and over again. Have an amazing day and talk to you next week. <laughs>